I had the dream again. One sister was a dreamer. Why does everything always have to be about sex? Wanting to be loved. Do you think you can help us? The other sister, a stranger. Take off your clothes. No. Waiting to be freed. You try divorcing a Greek Orthodox gangster. You chose. What did you tell him? You auditioned me like for a part. I didn't tell him anything. It was all lies. Singer, Uma Thurman. Wrong girl, pal. Final analysis premieres Sunday, 8.30 on 2. Good evening, I'm Alison Moore. I'm Simon Dello. Welcome to Newsnight. Coming up, Mark Stauffer goes on location with Jason Gunn and Thingy. Marisa Tomei and Robert Downey Jr. star in the new movie from the creator of Moonstruck. And Marcus finds out all about playing TV trivia on the telephone. But first, the news. Good evening. Divers tonight recovered a second body from the wreckage of a sunken chopper in the sea off the Coromandel Peninsula. The helicopter plummeted into the waves late this afternoon. Three passengers and the pilot survived, plucked from the water by a passing boat. This report from Loralee Mason. The chopper had just completed a private charter and was ferrying locals on a short flight to Pawa Nui when it plunged into the sea off Opito Bay, north of Fitianga, this afternoon. Of the six on board, two are now confirmed dead and four are injured. One body was found at the scene. The second was discovered in the wreck of the chopper by divers two hours ago. Police have yet to release their names. Of the four survivors, three suffered only minor injuries and were picked up by a boat off rocks at the crash scene. Rescuers were at the scene within half an hour. When we went around Needle Rock itself, we found the um, patients and the survivors on, on the shore itself. Um, from there, we sort of um, worked out the the wreckage must have been in the water um, and we then moved on to um, prioritising with the patients themselves. The pilot, Aaron Hollard, who's in his mid-30s, is tonight in a stable condition in Auckland Hospital's Accident and Emergency Department. It's understood he's suffering from head injuries. Staff say he'll be kept in overnight under medical observation. The chopper was a squirrel like this one and was chartered by the helicopter line in Auckland. At this stage, it's not known how the accident happened. They had no idea. They said, so I just um, flying around the rock and all of a sudden it just seemed to have disappeared into the water. Um, they had no warning, had no idea what was going on. The inspector of air accidents will decide tomorrow if and when the chopper is to be salvaged. Jeff Chapman has quit as our Auditor General today and tonight we still don't know why. But what is known as the public's watchdog on government spending is now being investigated by the Serious Fraud Office and he's heavily in debt. Lotta McVeigh has the details. The announcement was curt and to the point. Yesterday, Mr J.T. Chapman, Controller and Auditor General, tendered his resignation and the resignation has been accepted. There was no explanation. Most MPs didn't have a clue what was happening. The minister in charge of the audit office was left to explain. Mr Chapman has stated that his personal financial situation uh, was incompatible with his maintaining the independence of the office of the Auditor General. Is there any suggestion though that there's a crossover between his own personal financial affairs, which you've made reference to, and the financial affairs of the audit office? You are now trying to draw me on what might, might or might not be the conclusions of the person who's been charged with the responsibility of investigating those very matters. But checks today on Jeff Chapman's credit record show this year he's run up credit card debts totalling almost $23,000. After a morning of top-level meetings, the government ordered an inquiry. And late this afternoon, the Serious Fraud Office stepped in, announcing it too wants to investigate Mr Chapman. And fraud squad detectives are tonight probing yet another charity scam. An outfit calling itself the HIV Trust has been collecting for kids with HIV. Edwina Hughes, who claimed to be a doctor, heads the legally registered charity. 
but checks have provided sh have proved she's a sham. No, doctor of biomedicine. I've just been actually with the public relations man at the police department, and we've sort of fixed this up. But you, you accept that you you are a claim to be a doctor, and you're not. No, no, I claim. <laughs> no. You put doctor on the trustee. I'm a doctor of, of, of biomedicine. Oh, that was a type of Sarah, I think. Hughes claims she's found a cure for AIDS and homosexuality. Cure for homosexuality consisted of wearing a gold band around your wrist for three months because she said that homosexuality is caused by an irregular pulse. The charity's already collected thousands of dollars, but today Thank some of that's see. been handed over to the AIDS Foundation. And claims today accused baby killer Heather Ross was found knitting minutes before one of those in her care was found dead. She's charged with the murder of two young sisters she lived next door to. Today, the trial jury heard mother Sherilyn Wales tell how both girls were in excellent health. She said problems only occurred when Ross was looking after them. The defence is expected to begin next week. Car salesman Martin Parsons was in court today, charged with killing his dad, Alan. A depositions hearing was told how the pair were spotted arguing on the day Alan Parsons disappeared. His body was later found dumped in a locked garage. And cruising on the Inter-Islanders become napping on the overnighter. New Zealand Rail's just launched a 24-hour service, which it claims will put an end to long waits on the wharf. But it's not all plain sailing yet. Last night's first sailing was half an hour late and less than half full. You will have teething prob uh, problems and we'll hopefully uh, get it sorted out pretty quickly and uh, be on time. But none of these passengers were complaining. For them, there was only one option. Well, the rest of the world's been caught napping by China's recent sporting surge. And right now, that nation's swimmers and athletes are cleaning up at the Asian Games in Japan. And sporting officials are determined to clear up claims that Chinese are cheating. It was at the Rome World Championships a month ago that the ripples of suspicion were turned into waves by champion Chinese swimmer Jing Yi Li, a woman of 19 with a physique that would be the envy of any male bodybuilder. Allegations that the Chinese are using drugs have followed them to Asia's showpiece games in Hiroshima, where the scrutiny has intensified. It's a very, very strict system of control, and uh, we wouldn't want it any other way. Australian Olympic watchdog Phil Coles here assessing Japan's dope screening procedure, which has so far tested 16 female Chinese swimmers and another group of Chinese yesterday. Like Rome, China's been winning just about everything on offer here. The unstoppable gold rush is expected to continue during this week's track events. But the real worry in Hiroshima is that the Chinese may not be using drugs at all. The country's famed track coach, Ma Junren, has produced a stable of women runners that broke three world records last year. He says China's prowess is all down to two things, a gruelling dawn-to-dust training program and a secret potion that includes turtle blood and a little herbal magic. China lost the race to hold the 2000 games, but is going for broke to ensure it wins where it counts six years from now. And that's the news, Ellie. Thanks, Simon. After the break, Marisa Tomei and Robert Downey Jr. star in the new movie from the creator of Moonstruck, and Mark Stauffer goes on location with Jason Gunn and his sidekick, Thingy. And he's, he's take, he took me under his nose and you know, and took me everything he took me everything he knows he's just he's amazing he's a giver he's a giver It's not your best work. Acts like a dog, Phil. Now it's easier to buy your favourite lotto combination. Instead of asking for a super lucky dip and three lines of strike, just ask for a double dip. It's a lotto outlet now. Lotto double dip. Double dip. Double dip. Double dip. I like it. Yeah. Double double cheese, cheeseburger is back. McDonald's double double cheese, cheeseburger is back. For a limited time, McDonald's double cheeseburger is back. Two all beef patties, two slices of cheese, just two dollars and fifty cents. And all you gotta do is ask for a double double cheese, cheeseburger, burger, please. And that's no double double talk. Ooh, at McDonald's. McDonald's double double cheese, cheeseburger is back. For a limited time. 
There's hair, and there's hair with style. To get it, you need the right elements. Salon Selectives, interlocking formulas you put together to go beyond hair that's just there to hair with style. Salon Selectives, the elements of style. We'll prove again you don't need muscles even to clean the filthiest of floors. Mr. Muscle Floor Cleaner has the power to easily remove grease and grime for a sparkling shine every time. Mr. Muscle loves the jobs you hate. For pain and inflammation like this, you need Cataflam. The anti-inflammatory painkiller containing Diclofenac to stop pain, reduce inflammation, and get you moving again. Only from your pharmacist. If you'd like to save $10 on Katie's softly rippled tops, in breezy new styles and a rainbow of fresh summer colours, don't miss them while they're just $19.95 a piece. That's a nice saving, Katie. Well, g'day, Robbo. You're a long way from the coast. Uh, yeah, game started yet? Dave, have a seat. <laughs> right, have a beer. Our beer. It's what we drink around here. Where's Bill? Queenstown. Hey, lads. Game started yet? Sit down. Shop at your leisure this weekend at Hunter Lounge Suites. Open seven days, Saturday and Sunday from 10 till 4, and buy direct from the factory floor. And remember, every suite carries my personal guarantee. You give us this, and we'll give you this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or this. Whereabouts? Right here in Print City. One location, four companies, lots of parking, hundreds of services. Tomorrow on two. I cannot take much more of Waverly Wah Wah Wilson. She is copying everything I do. But this time, Waverly's gone too far. What? Why don't you go to hell? Shortland Street. Tomorrow at seven after Cheers on Channel Two. On Wednesday night. Let's just say Roland isn't exactly a rocket scientist. This brilliant mind functions in its own unique way. Roland Fuller barely has an IQ of 70. The X Files. Wednesday, 8:30 on Channel Two. Good evening, you're with Newsnight. Newsnight's with you. Later on tonight, I'll find out what happens when you pick up the phone and dial 0900 TV trivia. I've also got a story on the shop that sold Michael Jackson that rhinestone glove. All that more a little later. Here's Ellie. Thanks, Marcus. Well, he's an entertainer, a showman, a household name, and each year he brings joy to thousands of young New Zealanders. But who is he really? Mark Stauffer goes behind the scenes in Christchurch in search of the answer. We're here at Woolly Meadows, just outside Christchurch, visiting one of the longest-running and most successful productions in New Zealand television history. And I'm here to meet a man, a face that has inspired me into television. I am, of course, talking about... Good day, thingy. Hey, you're mate? Mark. Pleased to meet you, you buddy. Little tiger. Hey, love what you do. Love I what you love do. you too. Love you. What's on the show? Well, thank you very much. Six, five, four... Yes, I coped and I can still cope, because that's the cope. type of thingy that I am. You're Thingy got his big break back in 1987 on a show called After School. What is that thingy? What's that thing there? You've got that flipping around like a madman on the set. But it's the son of a gun show that's propelled him to superstardom. Why are you dressed as a pig? Do you ever get a bit hacked off with the adoration he seems to get? Nah, mate, nah. Different sorts, you see. I mean, he's the master, isn't he? Oh, yes, 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 yes. We're the doctor, yes, yeah. yes, yes. You know what? What? He gave you something, didn't yes, he? Yes, he gave me some ointment. <laughs> so I'm dressed like a pig. Uh, oh, well, always the ham, I suppose. Yep, he is a master. Yes. So how long have you guys been working together? Oh, six or seven years now. Six a year. I, see, he was there. He was there before I was. He was there, out of the egg, and I was there, and uh, I came along, and there he was, and he's, he's take, he took me under his nose, and, you know, and took me everything. He took me everything he knows. He's just, he, he's amazing. He's a giver. He's a giver. He's mysterious, that's what he is. He's a, he's a gem, he's a one of a kind, he's the sort of thing you'd like your son to grow up to be, but I guess you know you never will know. He always will leave and never will, if you know what I mean. Uh, now, do you think puppets over the years have, have had a, a fair time on television? I'm just thinking back to the play school days. I mean, Jemima and Big Ted didn't even talk, did they? Now, how about you, Manu? What would you like to be? Hmm? A princess. Ooh. What about the toys of play school? They didn't talk. 
Well, they don't talk. <sighs> but, they're, but they're legends. They're legends. They are. Less is more, they say. Less is more. Do you have any personal favourites? Well, I mean, Jemima was always special. Mm. You know, she had that, the way she walked, the way she... Didn't talk? The way she didn't talk. <laughs> Jemima is a queen, a queen, a queen. Is there, is there any discrimination in television against puppets, do you think? Yeah. What, are, what are your toilet facilities like? Well, I don't, I don't know. As I said before, I don't know any puppets, and <laughs> I'm definitely not one myself, so right, I don't really know. I mean, I work with the guy, right? Mm. I work with the guy. I know the ins and outs, the intri the, intri the little things mm. about the guy. And I'm telling you, if he was a puppet, I think I'm going to know. Mm. And I've seen you.